Welcome back guys, I hope this is recording me, and uh, I'm on my monopod so it's going to be a little shaky here. Um, I should probably just add a weight to this, you know. Um, yeah, so the last video was probably not the uh, most chipper thing, but uh, what I've got going here, um, those are just some WS2812B chips, nothing terribly awesome. Um, got them from Alice, for those of you on eBay. Um, probably have ordered stuff from, from there yourselves before. They're just uh, an 8-bit eight, um, eight WS2812 bar. They come in a little thing like that. I think it was... Um, I can't remember. I think maybe it was $4 for the 4 bars. Might be wrong. Then I spent 4 bucks on these. Um... Let me get some other light on here. Oops, one, two, three. I got a little dollar store lamp. It's touch sensitive. <laughs> you tap it three times for your brightness. Um, let's just come over here. Get that focus for us here. That's uh, basically a Maple Mini clone. That's an ARM Cortex M3, I believe. Um, I could be wrong in that, but it's definitely an ARM processor. It um, comes with a bootloader that allows you to use the serial, which I don't know if you can see this messy little fellow back here in the background. That's just a USB to serial uh, adapter, and you can plug that directly into the UART1 or the serial hardware 1 on the board, and you can use that to flash it. Um, you just move that jumper into the programming spot, push reset on the board, and then you can use the uh, Arduino uh, STM32 library um, to uh, program the board. However, there have been some people that um, have, well that would program the board directly, there were some people that worked very hard on making it work a lot like a Nano. So you can actually program this through its built-in USB you don't even have to move the jumpers anymore, but you do have to have a custom or a special bootloader. The Arduino, um, I guess they're called STM32 Duino bootloader on this. Um, then when you upload, all you have to do is push that little reset button underneath there. And if you can see that just above my fingernail there. I'm going to tip this into more light. There's a little reset button next to those jumpers. Dead center there. Um, so that, oh jeez, bump the whole camera here, sorry, I'm going to do a little trick for us that has worked in the past, and that is, I'm going to add some weight to this, and that might, okay, there we go, that'll dampen some of the shakes, um, anyhow, yeah, so, you just push that button, and then you would upload in your, in your IDE as normal, um, we're going to go up and look at the screen here, and hopefully it won't be too out of focus. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, the uh, library I'm testing, has he bothered to put his credentials? No, he didn't. Okay. Um, hmm. Arduino STM32 library, Roger Clark Melbourne. So, uh, GitHub, Roger Clark Melbourne, Arduino STM32. Uh, you download that, I think it's actually now in the boards manager for the IDE anyways. And in the examples, you uh, can go in and then there's this, this test file. Um, here, hang on. Yeah, I had to look up, uh, it was actually a PA7, um, pin A7 is the actual uh, MOSI on this. There's, it's got some, uh, the advantage over this chip, besides my old favorite here, which is a Nano, and actually, just to flick you all around, that's a Nano down there, they're very similar. Um, is that it's got more hardware, <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, let's 
Let's see if I've got one with peanuts here. Using at first. Uh, apparently A7, this one here is the one I was supposed to use. But if you can see, <laughs> it is also duplicated over here to B5, according to this pinout. Um, you can see it's very much like a, a Nano. The board's a little wider because they write the names of the actual pins at the tip of the board. And I'm not sure if there's actually any traces underneath those or if you could grind that off if you need the board to be narrow again. It uses the uh, smaller cell phone type USB connection. This one has the metal reset button. Mine has a little bit of a smaller, narrower reset button, but uh, pretty much all the same. You can use ST-Link here, but not once you've put the Arduino bootloader in. Once you've put the Arduino bootloader in, I do believe this turns into SPI. Um, I think, or it's gone back to just regular GPO, I'd have to look that up again, but apparently there's a change once you put the Arduino bootloader, this no, those four pins no longer work for ST, uh, uh, ST Link. Um, flashing the bootloader is, uh, quite easy, um, let me just do this here, it's this program here, you got it to, uh, uh, go to ST uh, Micro's website. Um, if you start looking for how to do this, there's all kinds of videos. I'll put uh, a link below as soon as I can dig up one of the ones that I follow. You would then find the port you're going to use. You click next. But this is going to fail here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it's going to be mad because there's no... This is looking for that uh, USB to serial uh, adapter board and I have yeah <laughs> it's not looking it's not finding what it wants but what you would do is then um, you would go in and then you pick your option of a binary and then there was a couple uh, couple on the go there's a couple binaries that you can download again all from the same, uh, same place I think he has them all there too um, and you just flash it. Now, the one thing neat about that is, with that program that I just had up, you can also read what's been flashed to the board back out, unless you, for whatever reason, put copy protect on it. But you can get your sketch working on the board exactly how you want it, save that binary, and then to program newer boards, all you gotta do is use that one flash program and just flash all the newer boards directly. Um, or subsequent ports. It's it's pretty awesome actually. Um, it's 3.3 volt with a few 5 5 volt tolerant pins. I think um, here, here's a version of the uh, board pin out that warns which ones are 5 volt tolerant with the green dots here versus ones that uh, can't take the um, 5 volt up. Oh, so red is 3.3 volt only. Anyhow, um, what I planned on doing with these guys, oh, watch that, it won't focus now. As you can see, there's a nano and that, basically a maple mini clone. Um, they're very, very close in size. My, my intention is to, uh, focus. Intention was to make a RGB LED controller using the uh, WS2812 type things uh, for a PC to make a custom controller. It's also going to use an OLED display for uh, one of those little small OLED displays uh, over SPI to display system data. And I'm hoping that using uh, SPI 1 doesn't mess up SPI 2. I mean, I hope by doing the, the bit banged 
WS2812 on, on SPI1 isn't going to mess with the hardware SPI2 um, because I, I really want to uh, run a display off that and it's that or I have to use a really slow um, uh, I've got a slower one that uses the I squared C bus and on this thing there's a couple I squared C's I believe uh, just not being marked on that yeah there's see yeah there's three of them all right, all right. anyhow uh, not totally familiar with that board yet it's uh, totally easy to use though um, here I actually have it connected with uh, USB back to the computer and I still have it serial programmer a serial programmer plugged in this programmer is kind of my favorite um, I forget the chip on there I don't know if we're gonna be able to get that to focus I don't know maybe you can see that CP2102 or something like that focus you booger there's a problem with this camera I don't want to focus on that chip is coming up there but I think it is a CP2102 um, oh, <coughs> excuse me apologize for that I like this because it gives the full breakout of that chip so you can have your DTR um, and actually a bunch of other you can see features on the back um, for interfacing with different boards like the ESP boards uh, Arduinos and whatnot. It, keep, it can perform serial reset. Um, I haven't hit a board that I, I can't program with this. And the best part about this board is it runs at 3.3 volts uh, and it's 5 volt tolerant and it has a 5 volt supply. So you can program 3.3 volt um, things and 5 volt things. And it just works. And of course you can just use it as a serial interface for like if you're using an Arduino Pro or some other thing that you want to add serial back to, uh, serial to USB sort. Anyhow, um, kind of a scattered update. I wasn't really planning on doing this tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, I made a mess of my desk. But uh, some of the stuff is uh, going the way I planned. I found those really, really easy to use. Um, really surprised how easy these are to use. Um, I kind of expected them to be a bigger headache actually. And they're not. They're got a few convention changes from Arduino, but uh, from say for example uh, the AVR chip. But uh, no different than getting used to a different type of Arduino. So um, kind of cool that way. Um, yeah. So other projects, uh, converting some of my, uh, I think I might be converting some of my um, uh, stuff like my laser plotter and things to use this, 32-bit, uh, 72 megahertz. Um, I bought these from Alice, and I'm going to take a quick second on that. Um, they were listed as 64 bits of flash RAM. Um, all of them came as 164K. All of them come as 128K of flash. They're all double what was listed, which is great. Caused one tiny problem. Uh, if you upload the smaller uh, bootloader to it, the, the smaller bootloader, it actually won't work. And it took me a couple times before I actually noticed in the ST Flash app that it was saying 128K. Um, I kind of figured it might have just put the bootloader in and being smaller, it would just have been like formatting a drive smaller and you just see less and I might never have noticed. But actually no, it, just, it, it actually just didn't work. I actually had to pick the right larger value for it to work. So um, that was interesting. Um, anyhow, I'm going to continue wiring up my uh, 2812 modules here. Um, they're going to be used for various... Uh, Pretty typical things. One of them is putting a you know a big piece of acrylic on on the edge of it, so it'll light up into the acrylic. Um, 
I need to find out if my laser can etch the acrylic because I have some ideas of what I want to put in the acrylic. I know I can get it to mark the acrylic, which is really all I need. And I'm going to have to put um, like a coating of Sharpie or whatever. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, just put some permanent marker on it. And then what will happen is my low powered laser will react with that marker and mark into the plastic. Then I can wash it all back off with a good alcohol. And um, yeah, that should uh, be interesting there. So, uh, what else? Well, everything else is like uh, just other versions of the WS2812 rings. You guys have seen me use uh, other times before. I just kind of got these straight ones because they kind of look neat for doing um, different lighting effects. Um, like a, a lit backplane for my, my video card if I ever decide to put like a see-through panel on the side of my case. Uh, anyhow, now I'm just rambling. Um, probably on about, uh, well, I don't know. Not sure how many minutes I recorded. Anyways, uh, yeah. Oh, on the ear side of things, for those of you that have stayed to the video this long and listened to my rambling this long, uh, saw the ENT, and the ENT, uh, surgeon looked at my ear, looked at my stuff, asked me a few questions, and kind of said, hmm. You know, there's a chance what went wrong in your ear is not what we first thought. There's a small chance that the tiny hairs in my cochlea are still there. And that it's actually damaged to the auditory nerve. Which of course sounds absolutely horrible. But um, actually, depending on the severity and type of damage, it can be uh, better because there's a tiny chance now that over the next year or so, that nerve might heal itself as the lesion on it, the sheathing on the nerve or the lesion on it slowly closes. Um, the thing with that is, that's a very, very slow heal time. It, that doesn't happen fast, so it could be a year or so. So I have an MRI scheduled to have a look at that, and um, when I go and uh, when they call me and, or send me a letter for the MRI, I'll know when the actual appointment for that is and then I'll get back in and see him. But he has a hunch that what's wrong in my ear because of the way that the test and I guess the sensor they stuck in my ear um, seemed to indicate that there was response back from the inner ear. So it's funny, it'll be like my cochlea is doing the job, but the wire between <laughs> my ear and my brain is buggered up. So it would be like uh, the wire, <laughs> it would be like uh, the wire coming in, if this was, you know, the brain here, the wire coming in, somewhere along here there's damage, so only low frequencies are getting by, and so they need to find out was that damage from swelling or, or what could be there, um, or it's back to what we first thought, it's just all the hairs that are destroyed, but he seems to think that it's nerve, and if it's nerve there's some things we can do about it, um, and there's some other stuff that can be done for, for hearing in the meantime. Anyhow, um, this went way longer than I intended, but uh, if you're still listening now, you're uh, either incredibly bored or just actually interested in this crap. Um, so, yeah, anyhow, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll try and have something way more interesting next time, and maybe go a little more into how to program one of these. Uh, if there's interest in that, just pop a message below. I'll actually take one of these through all the steps, if there's interest because um, there are other videos, but what I might do is put them all kind of in a row and uh, go from flashing to putting a basic Arduino sketch on and, and then moving from there. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.